Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. I have reviewed more Seiko watches on this channel than any other watch brand. In fact, I've probably reviewed more Seiko watches than the next two or three brands combined. They are just such a big player. They're so dominant in the 500 US dollar or less end of the market that has always been the focus of this channel. Fantastic company, fantastic history of innovation and invention. Let's not forget, they invented quartz, the ripples of which are still being felt in the industry 50 years later. But Seiko are owned by shareholders. And I have commented on more than one occasion that usually you can tell a couple of areas where profit has come over product in each Seiko model. And I mentioned it as little as a couple of weeks ago. There is a general consensus now that Seiko are beginning to push their prices up of their mid-range pieces without actually offering you any more for the money than they used to. But give them their due, nobody does dials like Seiko for less than 500 US dollars. Now, big shout out to my friend and notorious flipper, Mr. Phoenix. This Seiko that I'm gonna show you today, the SSA343 is not mine, it is his, or at least it was his. I think he had it for 20 minutes before selling it on to someone else. I actually had the Espresso Martini, the brown dial version of this watch in my own collection, maybe about 18 months ago, but I didn't have a macro lens at the time, so I thought it was the perfect opportunity for a re-review. Let's flip the camera and see if I can do this stunning dial justice. So bling on a budget, I mentioned 500 US dollars in the intro. You should be getting plenty of change to be honest from your 500. Here they are on Amazon. This is the SSA 343J1 that I've got to show you. 420 seems to be the going rate for this particular model. Similarly, on eBay, 425, pretty much the same thing. Now, the Seiko cocktail time range has been knocking around for 10 years, inspired by mixologist Shinobu Ishigaki from his Tokyo bar. This is one of the OGs. This is one of the Saab 065s. I reviewed one of these a few years ago. You note on the dial there, no pressage. They brought them into the pressage line, switched the movement from a 6R to a 4R, but didn't really do much about the price. You can pick up the odd Saab 65 if you really wanted to, but as you can see, they've jacked up the price to 820. They've expanded the range considerably since that original model from 2010. There you are, pressage on the dial. There really is one of these to match your mood and your favorite cocktail, I guess that's the point. Shining markers evoking the stem of a cocktail glass and curved second hand. I'll try and show you that in a second. There's a blue dialed version. This is the one I've got to show you the ice blue sky diving version. Again, you can get them on a bracelet leather strap or here that's a kind of four hander with a date complication at the six o'clock and a power reserve here as well, which is quite interesting. Moving on, we have the sidecar, Margarita Martini, Manhattan. The one I had, the espresso martini, which is kind of black brown, Gimlet, Spritzer, and finally Mockingbird. Now, if you're not that fussed about which particular one you go for, I found a whole bunch of these in Australia from $399 to $499 on Starbuy. I'll obviously leave links to all of these in the description of the video. So that's the cash then. But what do you get for your cash? Well, I think you definitely get one of the prettiest, most intricate, most elaborate dial designs that I've seen on any watch under 500. You get one of the usual Seiko cardboard boxes as well. And there is the watch in the flesh. It should be noted though, this one certainly isn't as blue as the SARB065 was, and I don't think it's as blue as it appears on the Seiko press shots. Here's the thumbnail. I ripped this one directly from the Seiko website and back to the watch. And to be honest, it looks bluer on camera than it does in real life to all intents and purposes. This one is silver to my eyes, but it is very, very pretty indeed. Obviously the power reserve, the date at the six there, it adds an extra level of intricacy and complication that you can do without if you don't like all of that extra fluff on the dial. They do a three-hander with a date at three o'clock. All the same dimensions though, those being 40 mil diameter, 47 mil lug to lug, 20 mil lug width, but wait for the kicker, 14.6 mil thick. Now that is dive watch thick. I'm gonna bring in my top of the range calipers here. <clears throat> just to show you so that there is no doubt at all, 14.61. That is way thicker than a Seiko Saab. That is thicker than an SKX 007. 
and it is even thicker than my Breitling Navitima, which is a bit of a beast of a watch, frankly. Now, obviously, Seiko are free to make it as thick or as thin as they choose, but I'm not quite sure why it had to be this thick. The 4R movement, this is a 4R57 in the back of this one, not the world's thinnest movement. And there is a piece of domed Hardlex crystal there. Now, thanks to the fact that it's domed, that it is nicely integrated into the high-polished 316L stainless steel case, it does slip under a cuff, but it would slip under a cuff a damn sight easier if this watch was 12.5mm thick rather than over 14 and half mil thick. So at 14.6 mil thick, we're not really in dress watch territory, are we? That's not really what this thing is about though, is it? It is a bit chunky. Certainly you could wear this one as a daily, as an office watch, no problem at all. But perhaps that whole cocktail time thing, it's a Saturday night watch. It's a getting dressed up, it's a showing off a little bit, and it's putting something slightly flashy on your wrist. And like I said, there ain't much flashier than this at 500 bucks. Check that dial, it really is very, very pretty. We've got those lovely arrowhead indices all the way around, larger ones at the 12, the three and the nine and a truncated large one down there at the six o'clock and then smaller indices everywhere else. Applied Seiko logo, Presage automatic printed underneath and a recessed circular date complication there above the six. Like I said, there are options if you prefer a standard date wheel at three, but this one I think looks pretty good. One thing I'm not personally all that convinced by though is the power reserve indicator. I'm not quite sure that it suits this type of watch and it is really quite a large and dominant one going all the way from the 12 round to the four o'clock. At least it does give another little option for them to color match. You can see there the second hand is color matched along with the tip of the power reserve hand and also the date indicator down there as well, all in blue on this ice blue skydiver model. Push-pull crown, but we do have a screw-on case back helping with five bars, so 50 meters of water resistance. You could go swimming in this one if the party does take you into the pool, but I would recommend doing it on one of the braceleted versions of this watch rather than with the leather strap. You won't be doing it any favors. So 4R57A, one of the 4R family of movements, 29 joules, so we've got a few extra joules helping with that power reserve indicator and the date complication down at the six. Roughly 40 hours power reserve as displayed on the front. Stated tolerances of these ones, minus 20 to plus 30 seconds per day, though they usually come in from my experience. Hovering somewhere between zero and plus 10. Let's check this one, shall we? And true to form, this one right at the upper edges of that range, hovering just below the plus 10 seconds per day variance with a healthy amplitude and a more than acceptable beat error for a watch that is about six months old. So 21,600 vibrations per hour, leading to six ticks of the second hand per second. So not quite the high beat sweep, but in practice, you'll barely notice the difference, I'm sure. You'll barely notice the difference because you'll be too busy staring at that gorgeous dial. I'll throw in some macro here and hope that it vaguely does this watch justice. It really is so pretty the way that it bounces the light back and forth. Now, one thing I noticed that was different from my Espresso Martini version was that the hands on this one, the Dauphine hands are high polish on both sides. On the Espresso Martini, half was frosted and half was high polish. So you got a bit of distinction that way. This one, high polish throughout. Again, it's just another surface to catch and play with the light on these watches. They really are so, so pretty. So the smaller, more slender arrowhead indices just have two Two sides, they're kind of ridged in the middle, but the larger ones at the 12, the three and the nine have a flat upper surface as well. So again, just another little intricate detail there. And I do really like it when Seiko apply a logo to a watch. I think their brand name always looks fantastic there underneath the index at 12. One thing I'm not that convinced by though is the requirement of the fifth of a minute track running around the outer edge. You know, a minute markers, I can see the point in that, but this isn't a chrono. I think the dial would look cleaner without those markings around the outer edge, but hey, who am I? And on wrist, she's a bit thick, but she sure is pretty. And I quite like the strap. The original one on the Saab 065 was pretty horrendous. It was stiff and really non-compliant. This one though, much, much nicer, soft, it's calf backed, and it's got that little blue outer stitching to complement the blue tones on the dial and those tips of the second hands and so on. And it actually has a pretty decent Seiko deploying clasp. So let's finish with a few more shots of the dial because really this one is all about that dial today. If you're falling in love, if you're mesmerized by those grooves, by the sunburst pattern, the radial effect, 
all those shiny faceted surfaces on the indices and the hands, the splashes of color here and there, then you will forgive this one, the girth, you'll forgive this one, the basic movement, you'll forgive this one, pretty much anything. Because like I said, you just don't get a dial like that anywhere else for the price. So there you have it. If you want a little bit of bling for a little bit of money, you would do well to check out this or pretty much anything else from the Seiko Presage range of watches, what used to be known as the Cocktail Times. Perhaps not the best movement in the world, and that is hard lights crystal, so you're going to have to be careful with it, but that dial is just beautiful. Thanks for watching. I will see you soon.